I'm thankful that the Lord breathed breath into us that we can come and sing praises unto him. So come on, we welcome you to the house of the Lord. Let's give him all the glory that every praise is due to him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. this morning. 
morning. We thank you, Jesus, just because of who you are today, God. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
bless you and we thank you for all that you have done this week. Lord, I want to take a moment right now. We just want to bless you for what you have done. You are worthy of our praises. Thank you, Jesus. Let every worshiper arise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. that song right there if you would this morning folks if we don't get anything else accomplished today I plan on preaching I plan on whatever the Lord wants us to do but if we don't do anything else this morning can we worship him can we praise him can, can we all agree this morning that he's worthy of our praise he's worthy of our worship yeah I, I confess this has been a, a, a very challenging week in regard to the ministry in regard to 
significant challenges of sickness that has hit uh, the house or at least very close related to the house this morning uh, we see the stage I uh, even got a couple folks off of there we got people filling in everywhere this morning trying to help get us through uh, the production side of the table and get us through the sound side of the table and all the above but how many know this morning that God hasn't changed amen God hasn't changed amen hallelujah so I want us to worship him now sometimes you have to press through you got to press you got to press you got to push your way through this morning so right now I want you intentionally I'm, I'm asking you to do it intentionally this is not assignment says a, a, a operation here but I am asking you right now to intentionally show him some form of worship some act of praise some act of thanksgiving this morning he has been too good to all of us for us not to worship him Come on, brother, just sing a little bit more of that. Let the worshipers arise. Hallelujah. Let the worshipers arise. He's worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Let the sons and the daughters see. I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the King. Hallelujah. Let the worshipers arise. Come on, let's do it. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Let the sons and the daughters see. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm surrendering my own. I surrender to the Yes. Let the worshipers rise. Let the sons and the daughters see. I'm surrendering my own. I surrender to the King. I surrender to the King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm surrendering my all this morning. I want you to raise your hands as if you're surrendering this morning. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I surrender to you today. I surrender to your ways, to your will. I surrender to you this morning. God, work on me, work in me, work through me this morning. I worship you today. I surrender to you today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big clap off and a praise this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you may be seated. I'm going to ask them to continue to play. Just play a little bit of right, whatever that's on the heart right there. I was kind of pondering on, on when uh, to do this, just trying to follow the, the will of the Lord, trying to follow God's direction. You know, I, I really believe there's no better time for God to do great things than in the atmosphere of praise because that's when He is most present. I believe that. There's no better, there's no better atmosphere, there's no better time to, to reach out and, and believe, have our faith operating than during the time of praise and worship. And this morning, I, I, we, we do have some, some folks that need a touch from the Lord. And I believe this morning God's still a touching God. He's still a healing God this morning. Hallelujah. I feel His presence already. Hallelujah. Brother Newt offered Sister Kathy's dad is a, is a significant, severe need of a touch from God. Not tomorrow. We need that touch today. Amen. We don't need it, we don't need it Wednesday. We need it today. Amen. And I believe God's able to touch him today. Hallelujah. A little Sam right here, a little baby Sam right here, without going into a lot of details. A little Sam is a little touched this morning. And we want to pray for Sam as well. But that's the two that, that have come to my mind this morning, maybe you need a touch from God. Maybe there's something we're not going to ask you to elaborate on. We're not going to ask you to tell us what's going on by any means because it's not really that, that really that important to us if we know the details. God knows. I'm not going to bring the healing anyhow. Nobody else is going to bring the healing but God. Amen. And I'm going to ask you this morning, 
if you, if you want to be prayed for, there's something in your life, a body, physical touch. You need a physical touch right now in your body. I'm going to ask you to come, and I'm gonna, I want to uh, lay hands on you. And for any of those who want to come, uh, stand behind these who are coming this morning. I'm going to ask you to come and just support them. Amen. I'm going to ask, Brother Ray, would you come and stand on behalf of Brother uh, Alford, if you would? Um, if you would, Brother Ray, I'm going to ask you to stand on behalf of Brother Newt this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there any others today? Any others? Now, I'm going to ask for some folks on purpose this morning to come and just gather around behind them. If, if you want to be prayed for, if you just kind of get in a single line, that way I can know who's, who I'm going to be praying for. That's right. Just kind of get beside each other in a single line. There you go. I'm going to ask some more folks to come and just gather behind these this morning and let us pray. How many of you believe today without knowing, without knowing, I don't, I don't really don't have no idea outside of little Sam. I know little Sam and I know little uh, Brother New situation. But outside of that, I really don't know what I'm specifically praying for. But that's not bothering my faith. That's not bothering my faith at all. Why? Because it doesn't really matter in regard to what the issue is because God's greater than the issue. Amen. God's greater than the issue. Hallelujah. So if you're out there this morning, I want you to reach your hand this direction this morning. Amen. You want to pray for Brother Tommy as well? Okay, bring Brother Tommy right on up here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Band, music team, do as the Lord will lay on your heart this morning as we move around this morning and pray for these. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lay our hands upon Brother Tommy today. Father, I don't know the need. I don't know the situation as you know it. But I know today that there's nothing that Brother Tommy is confronted with that you are not able to touch. Now I pray in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, that you would touch my friend, that you would touch my brother. You are God and you are able to do great things. Minister to him, we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we lay our hands upon this little child this morning, Brother Sam. Father God, you know today what exactly little Sam stands in need of. Now we pray that you would remove every obstacle, that you would remove every barrier, God, right now. And I declare today, and I declare over his life today that he shall develop, he shall be everything that you have called him to be, God. I thank you for it. Hold up, Mom. Hold up, Dad, this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you today for that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray for Brother Newt this morning. We pray, God, there. God, in that Grand Strand Hospital. You know where he lies today. Then we pray for Brother Alfred Israel right now. In the name above every day. Touch him right now. We call his lungs back into order. We ask you, God, that you would touch this pneumonia and cause it to flee in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sister Kathy, today, we thank you today, Lord, that you know where she's at. You know what she's battling with. You know her situation. That we ask you now that you would touch her body, that you would remove the pain, that you would bring everything that needs to be in alignment to your word. Bring it into alignment, we pray. And we thank you for it. Brother Robbie, today, we thank you today, Lord, that you are going to bring his facial back into alignment. His eye, his mouth shall come back into alignment. Hallelujah. It will be done. This drawing shall be released to go back to normality. Thank you for it, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, your sister this morning. You know exactly what she stands in need of today. I don't know the issue, but you're greater than her issue. You're greater than her situation. And I'll reach out to you right now. Then we lay our hands upon her declaring today that she shall be made whole. She shall be renewed in the name of Jesus Christ. Little Sabrina this morning, we thank you today, God, that you have her in the palm of your hand. You have that which she's confronted with. You've not caught by surprise. And I pray that you are going ahead of her, that you are go before her, God, and that you will make every crooked place straight, that you will elevate every valley, that you will touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Minister, we pray to her. 
Hallelujah, Brother Chris, today. We thank you today, Lord, that he's a man that believes. He's a man that stands today in faith, knowing today that you are able to restore and heal. Minister to him, I pray. Restore his body in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for it all. Hallelujah. 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 I know I just asked you to stay, but would you have been sent? Would you stand right here? Come on, let's sing that song. Hallelujah. It's one word. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Let's give God some praise. Our God reigns. Yes. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our God reigns. Our God. Yes. Sing it one more time. One more time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is how I fight my Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated today. Thank you so much for believing. Thank you so much for coming and having faith today that God is able to do great and mighty things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I feel, I feel better. Amen. I feel better this morning believing that God is moving in an awesome and a powerful way. Well, let me follow up with that. I didn't really know how, how I was going to just try to follow the Lord right here. Amen. And I, I want to shift gears now. We just prayed for, for these who are in, in need this morning. If you haven't heard, if you haven't been getting your text, uh, Pastor Curtis's daughter, they actually had her admitted uh, to the hospital at McLeod on last Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Put her in intensive care because of severe dehydration is what they said. And somewhere on last Sunday night, maybe early Monday morning, uh, unfortunately, her, their 16-year-old daughter, while she was at McLeod, coded. She coded. And actually, heart start, stopped beating, they said, for 11 minutes. And, of course, they were there working on her. And, uh, anyhow, make a long story short, they, they got her flown out of McLeod. They got her flown to MUSC there in Charleston Children's Hospital. And uh, so that was on Monday morning when I woke up to, to that information. I just want to show you now, after we just got finished praying, though, I want to show you how big God is. How big God is. Amen. I just want to show you a picture. And I got permission, by the way, to do this. Um, I got permission to do this. I want to show you a picture that Pastor Curtis sent me Monday morning. And I want to show you a picture that he sent me Friday. To God be the glory. Can y'all, can you, that's the picture on Monday right there. She was on heart bypass machine. She was on the ventilator 100%. She was on 100% dialysis. And there's one more significant machine that she was on. That was on Monday morning after she coded and they flew her to, that's her there in MUSC Children's Hospital in Charleston. That's Monday morning. We began to pray. God began to move. Amen. And this is Friday afternoon. Hallelujah. Come on, we ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! To God be the glory! To God be the glory! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Pastor Curtis sent me a text right about one minute till 10 o'clock. He sent me another text. He said, Pastor, they just moved machine number three out the room. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! She's still on. She still, of course, she still definitely needs to continue to improve. She's on partial dialysis, a temporary dialysis, until she can get, they can get her kidneys hopefully back to function as they should be. But I believe that machine's got to go too, amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I give God praise. I showed you that because I want you to know those who came up here this morning, God's able. God is able. Amen. God is able. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you, I feel like shouting right there. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to say this on behalf of, of Pastor Tur uh, Curtis and his team is that uh, his team has just stepped in. I've given Pastor Curtis permission. Don't worry about ministry. Don't worry about church. Don't worry about anything going on here. You take care of that family. That's your top priority right now. Amen. And his team has stepped up, and they are filling the gaps. And we ought to give them a big clap off of appreciation for all that they're doing to help us. Amen. Some of them are in positions they've never been in before. Some of them are, are kind of flying by the, by the hair a little bit, but they're doing an awesome job. And I really, really appreciate that uh, so very much. Well, much to my despair, I have to tell you and be a man about, about this. Unfortunately, men, we didn't win the little contest last weekend. Amen. I, I really am sad to say that. But I'm glad the women had more than we did. But I really am not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we give the women all the congratulations that they deserve. Amen. All I'm going to say is I don't go down easy. Amen. And so we got another month coming. So men, make me look good next month, okay? Praise the Lord. So anyhow, uh, we'll definitely try to outdo them the next time. Though we seriously congratulate. You know what's so awesome about it is that we had... I don't even know the exact number. We had a good bit of people out, uh, out for ministry outside of Sunday and Wednesday. That's awesome, folks. We can get people to leave their homes and come out to enjoy ministry outside and fellowship. That's awesome. So we give God to praise for all the men and, and the ladies on, on last weekend. I just want to keep, I throw this out to you, um, is on the 28th of this month, they'll get back to our, our uh, Lions Den teen and junior high meeting out there. They'll have their own service on March the 28th, so keep that in mind uh, if you would. I'm going to ask Miss Chandra, I saw her earlier. Miss Chandra, where you are? I know I saw you earlier. There you are, Sister Chandra, come right here. Come right here if you would. Amen. Sister Chandra has, I don't even know, I was thinking this morning how many years, but I don't know. It's been a long time. Amen. Do you know how many years you've been serving? A lot, ain't it? Amen. It's okay. We're getting old. Amen. But, uh, but Sister Chandra has served for years, not just, not just a couple of months, but she has served for years as our hospitality uh, pastor and leader. And, uh, boy, she's done a marvelous job over that ministry. She has done a marvelous job. I, I can say this sincerely, I've never worried about how the service was going to run in regard to greeters and ushers and uh, resource room, none of that. She is dynamic. And, uh, but because of some family changes in her life in regard to some sickness, unfortunately, she's having to be out more than she would like to be out. And she felt like for, this, for the sake of the ministry that she would need to pass the torch over to another leader at this time. And so we appreciate uh, her so very much. And I could, I could not let her um, just step away without recognizing and acknowledging her. So Sister Chandra from Pastor and from the whole body of Great Commission Ministries, we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for all that you have done. Amen. Come on, give her a big thank you. She is so deserving. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, let's now, I think we got a special coming up here right here. So as they're getting prepared for that special, let's get prepared for our continuation of worship and our tithe and offering time. So uh, you see the bucket still spread, spread out. Uh, there again, as the teams are, well, just so you know this, the teams, ministry teams across, across all of our ministry teams, we're having to somewhat revive them or restore them a little bit because some folks have not yet returned that were on those teams. So then you know, just be patient with us as we continue to rebuild and refresh uh, some of the teams until we can get back to some of the normality. And we will get back to the normality of passing the bags here very soon. But until then, until then, we're going to continue to use our buckets uh, right there. Them buckets catch that $20 bill. This is as good as the plates. Amen. <laughs> to show. 
<laughs> Amen. Well, you know, the Bible talks to us about we are to give off of our increase. You believe that, right? That's what the Bible says, increase. And I, so I've had some folks, I have some folks of interest to ask me. There, if you haven't heard, there's a new uh, stimulus uh, package coming out. And in that stimulus package, there's going to be some, some are going to be receiving some financial benefits from that. And so folks have asked me, do you tithe on, on something like that? And I would say to you, biblically, theologically, I would say yes, 100%, okay? Now, if you do, that's between you and God. If you don't, that's between you and God. I would just have to give you what I would consider theological background to say to you, that is increase in our lives, okay? That's increase that you did not have. So you, should I tithe on that, on that stimulus? Yes, you should. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I got $1,400, I don't want to give $140. Praise, praise the Lord. So seriously, uh, if, that's, if that's a question, if some have asked me that question, that's why I'm answering that question. Okay, in case there's some others out there who may have an interest in, in the theological uh, point of view on that. God bless you. All right, we got a husband and wife today, dynamic duo. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Dynamic duo, Brother Justin and Sister Stacia. So as they're singing this morning, would you just make yourself um, in your worship and praise to the buckets this morning? God bless you. Go ahead.
He's reigning over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Praise the Lord. I feel good. Amen. You feel good this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. And I pray this morning that we will continue to give him praise and continue to give him worship this morning. Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord today. We're, we're here today for one purpose. That is to, to love and worship God and to love each other. Amen. Uh, I guess that's a two-purpose quote there. We're here to love God and worship Him and to, to, to show you love today. Folks that don't have a church family, I don't understand. Saved or lost, a church family is important. Amen. Amen. If you don't think a church family is important, you get in trouble. Amen. A church family would be there for you when nobody else would be there for you many times. And we thank God for the church family here at Great Commission Ministries. Thank you so very much. All right, well, if you'll stand in reference to the word of the Lord today, let's go to really go back to where I started several, several weeks ago. But I want to pick up another aspect of this text, if I can. Matthew chapter 16. And while you're turning there, we'll go to verse 13 of Matthew 16. While you're turning there, I'm going to continue to push it, continue to promote it. Our Wednesday night services, um, not only for our youth and children, have a wonderful uh, ministry going on outside for them, but for adults. Not, to, not because I'm the teacher by any means, I feel inadequate actually um, to, to be teaching uh, as, as the Lord has given to us here in Ephesians. But I just want to encourage you, if you, if you want to understand the Word of God, amen, not, not get so much emotional, but if you really want to know the meat of God's Word, I challenge you to be here on Wednesday nights. Amen. The, 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 the Word of God is powerful. And I'm, I tell you, I've been learning and I've been just feasting upon uh, the Word of God as we are preparing uh, for our Wednesday nights. And we're in chapter 5, so we're almost there. We're two-thirds of the way there. We're chapter 5 of Ephesians. We'll pick up on verse 1 on Wednesday night. As we continue to look at the duty, the duty. We've done seen doctrine, and now we're focusing on duty uh, from the believer. But here this morning in Matthew chapter 16, uh, guys, if you can give me a little bit of extra help up here, I'll be greatly appreciate that if in any way possible. Matthew chapter 16, begin reading with verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some say that you are Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you, this is where I preached last time, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to preach this morning on verse 14 of the second question of Jesus here, as he asked the second question, the first question was, whom do men say that I am? The second question, he said, but whom say you that I am? Father, I love you this morning, and I appreciate the opportunity and the privilege today to stand behind your sacred desk to preach your word. Thank you, dear God, for imparting into me and pouring into me this week as I have studied and I have prepared and I pray, now, Lord, that you will let that which you have put in come out in such a way that these who are here this morning will not be impressed, but, God, they would be impacted. It's my prayer today, God, that you would do a work in this place, not because of my preaching, but because of who you are in your word. Speak, we pray now, God, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. We call down every hindrance. We call down every stronghold. We call down every distraction. And we declare today now, Lord, as we endeavor to preach your word, there will be liberty. There will be freedom. 
there will be an easiness to preach. And we give you thanks and praise. Thank you in advance for what you're about to get accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Well, we want to continue talking, uh, going down the journey of shaking it off, the process and the theme of the year is shake it off. And I want to pick back up with, uh, for some reason, I, I never intended on really going this direction as I was uh, picking up this theme uh, earlier in the year, but I feel like it's, it's just the direction that maybe we need to go right now. I want to pick back up uh, the idea, um, I won't say the idea, but the, the, the fact of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. What I would better say is kingdom living. How many of you believe this morning that we who are Christians are to be living the kingdom life? Amen. That's Bible, by the way. We should be living the kingdom life. We should be kingdom living. Now, we showed you uh, several weeks ago, right from, the te- right from the word of God, what the kingdom of God is. It also said what the kingdom of God is not. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But rather it is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what Paul said in the book of Romans. So the kingdom of God is freedom. Okay, and I'm not going to re-preach all this. But the kingdom of God, when I say living the kingdom life or king, kingdom living, I'm talking about living a life of freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is righteousness. So therefore, to live a kingdom life, we are living a life that is free of sin. Okay? Living a life of righteousness. Number two, he says the kingdom of God is not only righteousness, but it is peace. So therefore, we live in a life that is free of stress. Amen? Now, I know you say, well, folks, how how, how can you live a life that is free of sin and free of stress? Well, I, I'm just saying this morning, I believe that with God's help, we can live above sin. Amen. We can live above stress. Praise the Lord. And then also, he says, not only is the kingdom of heaven a righteousness and peace, but it is joy. Oh, way too many Christians are sad today. Amen. So we ought to be living a life that is free of sin, that is free of stress, and free of sadness. Praise the Lord. And I believe, how many of you would like that to be a part of your life? That's a pretty good recipe right there, to be free of uh, sin, to be free of of stress, and to be free of sadness. And and we we went on and we started talking to us about this text here where Jesus said, I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And we began to examine several keys uh, of the kingdom, one of them being the master. Number two, our minds. I'm not going to re-preach any of this. Our mouths, our medium, and God's manuscript. So I believe this morning that if we can, if we can un, un, understand the master and understand to get our minds, to take on the mind of Christ, let our mouths be filled with blessing instead of cursing, amen, recognize that our medium, our environment plays a role in how we live, oh, praise the Lord, and understand that there is nothing better than God's manuscript, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, so that's what I want to talk to us, but what I want to do today is I want to take us back, really. I kind of started backwards. I really went to the end of this in a, a first, and now I'm going back to the beginning. I want to take us back, if I can, to where kingdom living begins. Now, if there's ever been a pastoral message, it's one today. So I may not make you too excited, but that's okay. I'm going to lay out to you what I feel the Lord laid to me. Amen? Amen. So, so I want to take us back to where the kingdom life or kingdom living begins. And that is found in the revelation that Peter gave to Jesus' second question. Jesus asked the question, well, but who do you say, who do you say that I am? And, And Peter gave this revelation. He gave this answer. But very obvious, it's a revelation. Because Jesus later said that this hasn't been revealed to you by man. This has been revealed to you by God. Amen. So it's a revelation that God revealed to Peter. But whom do you say that I am? And that's what I want to preach on today, if I can. And Peter brought out the revelation. He said, thou art Christ, the son 
of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. And then, and then Jesus began to, began to just build on that revelation. And he said, upon that revelation, Peter, upon that, Peter, upon that revelation, upon that Petros, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. And I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom based off of that revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what are you saying, preacher? If you don't understand who he is, then very likely, no, not very likely, you will not. If you don't understand who he is, you will not live the kingdom life. Hallelujah. But once you ever get a revelation of who he is, hallelujah, I am telling you today that sin does not have to dominate our lives. That stress does not have to control our every day. And sadness does not have to be a part of our countenance. Hallelujah. But until we know who he is, hallelujah. Now I want you to notice here the first question that Jesus asked. The first question was not, whom do you say that I am? But the first question was, whom do men say that I am? And then they all began to answer. They began to say, well, some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say that you're Elijah. Some say you're this, and some say you're that. Hallelujah. And, and, and so I want you to notice here that when he asked the first question, whom do men say that I am, and all the, the, those that were present, began to speak out to him about this one and you are this one and you are that one. See, the public, watch here, the public saw him in his humanity. But Peter saw him in his divinity. That's a big difference right there, my friend. Hallelujah. If you only see him in his humanity, you'll see him as an Elijah. You'll see him as a, as a, as a John the Baptist. And, and you'll see him comparing him to somebody else. But Peter says, no, he's not just, uh, he's not just like Elijah. He's not just like John the Baptist. But he is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Now, folks, Elijah was powerful. John the Baptist, there was none like him according to Jesus. Hallelujah. These were all great men, great, powerful men of God. But I'm here to tell you, there's never been a prophet. There's never been a forerunner. There's never been an apostle. There's never been anybody that compares to Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God. And folks, you're not going to understand who he is and his divinity until you allow a revelation from God to reveal it to you. Woo! That is a simple this morning, but I gotta, I gotta, I'm going to hit it and run. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to I do two things. I want to talk to you just for a few moments about the why to the question. And then I want to talk to you for the rest of the time about the who to the question. The why to the question, what's the question? Whom do men, uh, whom do you say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? You know, it really doesn't matter who I think he is to you. It really doesn't matter to me who you think he is to me. Amen. Because my revelation cannot help you. Hallelujah. Your revelation cannot help me. I've got to have a revelation of who he is. I've got to have a relationship with him in order to get a, re a revelation from who he, for who he is. So, so first of all, who is the why to this question? Why did he ask this question? Why is the revelation that important? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're still talking about the kingdom living. Why is having a revelation of who he is that important? Jesus answered it himself. He clearly answered the why it is important to have a revelation of who he is. Because without the revelation, there will never be no kingdom living. Listen to what he says. He says the why to the question is because if you get the revelation, he says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, folks, you got to understand that when he's talking about I'll build my church, he's not talking about the physical edifices. He's not talking about the physical architectural structures. 
Who is the church? The believer. So let me paraphrase there, theologically paraphrase what Jesus said. He said, upon the revelation, Peter, <laughs> upon the revelation, Peter, was the revelation that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Upon that revelation, Peter, I'll build your life. I'll build your life. And the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. I need somebody in this house who wants Christ to build a life for them that the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. Hallelujah. Oh, if you don't get nothing else, get that. He said not only, he said upon that revelation, Peter, upon that revelation, I will build my church. I will build my people. And the gates of hell will not win against them. Mm. Hallelujah. And then he says, not only that, I'm going to give them the keys to the kingdom. Folks, you can't, I, you can't have the keys without knowing the master. Amen. You can't, I said that last time, you can't get the keys from just anybody. As a matter of fact, I can't give you the keys. As a matter of fact, nobody, your mama can't give you the keys. You have to go to the, the master locksmith. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can't find the keys in a bottle. You can't find the keys in a joint. You can't find the keys in another opposite uh, affair with somebody else other than your spouse. You can't find the keys uh, in a nightclub. You can't find the keys even in a church. Uh, uh, you can't find the keys by having a friendship with a pastor. You can't find the keys uh, with a handshake from somebody. You can't find the keys from no other way, no other source but outside of the master. Hallelujah. He said, if you'll get a revelation of who I am, I'll build your life and the gates of hell will not prevail against it and I'll give you the keys to help you unlock the freedom above sin the freedom above stress and the freedom above sadness can somebody give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah so, watch, so, so very quickly if you're lost or if you're saved we have the same mandate, the same instruction to get our lives built where the gates of hell will not prevail against us and to get the keys of the kingdom. We have to turn to the master and we have to trust him. If you're not saved, turn to him today and trust him as your savior. If you are saved, hallelujah, quit trying to do it all by yourself and turn to the master and trust him. Hallelujah. I feel like saying that again. If you're not saved, turn to the master and get saved. If you are saved, turn to the master and trust him. <laughs> hallelujah. Well, who is? Uh, well, the why to the question. But now, let me spend the rest of my time. On the who to the question. To who to the question. Well, Peter, the revelation answered it. To who to the question is who? Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So I want to talk to you just five things very quickly. See, I'm telling us, the Word of God's telling us, if we're going to live the kingdom life, if we're going to be free of the vipers, if we're going to be free of those things that's destroying us or taking us down, then we got to understand today that Christ is the answer. So I'm encouraging us, Jesus is encouraging us to turn to him and trust him. So now I'm, I'm asking myself, Brother Robbie, why would I encourage you to do that or why would I even do that myself I'm hoping before I get finished I'm going to give you a reason or enough reason or enough understanding on why we should turn to Jesus well let me just talk to you briefly about Christ and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some description of who he is but let me just not bypass 
what Peter said. Peter said, thou art Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, folks, we all know if you have any, any understanding of the Bible, Christ is translated as the anointed one. As the anointed one. So, therefore, why would I turn to Christ? Why would I turn to him, whether a, a lost or, or a sinner or a saint? Why? Because he is Christ. He's the anointed one. See, folks, doctors can't do what Christ can do. Preachers can't do what Christ can do. Your parents can't do what Christ can do. See, he's the, he's, he's the anointed one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, therefore, because he's the anointed one, that simply implies or simply can be carried on a little bit further in defining him as that he is not natural, but rather he is supernatural. See, so many times, folks, we're trying to get answers naturally. But, folks, I'm here to tell you there's some things you can't fight in the natural realm. There's some things you can't get accomplished in the natural realm, you need to have a supernatural outlet. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus Christ. So he's the anointed one, which means that he's not natural. He's supernatural. In other words, I, I like the way this here sounds here even better. So when I say he's supernatural, I'm saying that he is super in the natural. Y'all didn't get that? Folks, we're living here on this earth. I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait to get to heaven to experience the supernatural. I don't want to wait to get to heaven to live the kingdom life. I want to have kingdom living here in the natural. So I can't have it without the supernatural. And I can't get the supernatural without Christ, the anointed one. So Christ, the anointed one, is not natural. He's supernatural. Or a deeper way of saying that, he is the super in my natural. Y'all ain't having near as much fun as I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And folks, I, you know, I told you how important the God's manuscript is. And I've done this before, so I mean, this is what I'm about to do. I, I wanted to show you Christ. How many of you know today this is a powerful book? You can have your bookshelves filled with all kind of get good, good information. In good books, and I'm not against them, I got some myself. But don't let ever, ever, ever let any of them surpass this book. Ooh, that book right there is powerful. And if you want to know, read that book. Hallelujah. So I begin to think about how can I talk to you about Christ, the anointed one, Christ, the supernatural, or the super in the natural? How can I talk to you a little bit about that? What I think what I'll do is do what I've done maybe one or two times in the past. I'm going to do it again. Amen. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to show you who he is in every 66 books of the Bible. Hallelujah. In Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's our high priest. In Numbers, he's the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he's our judge and our lawgiver. In Ruth, he's our kinsman redeemer. In Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings, uh, hallelujah, he's our Lord and King. Uh, in Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he's our faithful spouse. In Nehemiah, he's the builder of broken down walls. In Esther, he's our Mordecai. In Job, he's our redeemer. In Psalms, he is the Lord, our shepherd. Hey, hallelujah. In Proverbs, he's our wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he's our lover. In the Song of Solomon, he is our beloved fair one. In Isaiah, he is the prince of Peace. 
in Jeremiah. He's the balm of Gilead. He's the healer. Hallelujah. In Lamentations, he's the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he's the wonderful four-faced man. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in a fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's a faithful husband. In Amos, he's a burden bearer. In Obadiah, he's mighty to save. In Jonah, he's a foreign missionary. Boy, I feel like preaching. In Micah, he's the messenger with beautiful feet. In Nahum, he's the avenger of God's elect. Don't fight your battles. Let God fight them for you. In Habakkuk, he's God's evangelist. In Zephaniah, he is our Savior. In Haggai, he's the restorer of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he's the fountain open. In the house of David, in Malachi, he's the son of the righteous with healing in his wings. That's the Old Testament. But he don't stop right there. In Matthew, he's the Messiah. In Mark, he's the wonder worker. In Luke, he's the son of man. In John, he's the son of God. In in Acts, he's the foundation of the church. In Roman, he's the justifier. In Corinthians, he's our sanctifier. In Galatians, he's the redeemer from the curse of the law. In Ephesians, he is Christ of unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he's the God that supplies all of my needs. In Colossians, he's the fullness of the Godhead body. In Thessalonians, he's our soon coming king. In Timothy, he's the mediator between God and man. In Titus, he's a faithful pastor. In Philippians, he's a friend that'll stick closer than a brother. In Hebrews, he's the blood of the everlasting covenant. In James, he's the great physician. In Peter, he's the chief shepherd. In John, he is love. In Jude, he's the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints. In Revelation, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, Lord, I feel like preaching. Who is, who is, who who is it to the question? He's Christ. He's Christ. He's the super in the natural. Turn to him. Trust him. He can take your natural and make it super. Why? Why would I run and turn to him if that's not enough? Well, I'll tell you, number two is because he's capable. He's capable. I'm not here today to learn about what you need. I'm not here today to ask you to write it down and give it to me. I'm not here today for you to take the mic and say, I need God to do this, or I need God to do that, or I need this to happen, or I need that to happen. Hallelujah. Because as I said when I was praying earlier, is that it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you write down. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It don't matter what you need. God is capable of beating what you are. God is capable of becoming super in that natural situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, Christ himself is able to unlock, to unlock the keys they give, he's able to unlock the kingdom so that you may live a life of freedom. Amen. Folks, well, we've heard some reports this week. We've heard them in the past. And we'll keep hearing them from men and women. But I want to declare today that I'm not talking about men and I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about Christ. (laughs) Hallelujah. How many times have we not heard doctors say, there's nothing more we can do? 
How many times did we not hear Banker said, we tried to help, but we can't help no more. What, what, what was the last time we've heard lawyers say, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to go through this situation. Hallelujah. But I'm here today to tell you that what man, what it may be impossible with man, it is possible with God. He's capable. He's capable. Hallelujah. For Jesus himself, the Lord has, a, the, the Spirit of the Lord has a, is upon me. He has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel. He's, he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He's anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. Jesus is saying this. He's anointed me to recover sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised. Folks, why? 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 Why would I say? Why would Jesus say? It's that revelation. It's that revelation, Peter, that you can live a kingdom life. It's that, nothing else, nothing to add to or take away. It's that revelation that you, Peter, individually understand that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So why, why would I run to him? Because he's Christ. And there's no other way to get where you need. But number two, the reason why is because he's capable. He's capable. Let me just ask you, have you ever seen God do great things? Can we put the pictures back on the screen? I don't know if I can do that or not. Can you put those two pictures back on the screen again? Maybe you can, your brother can. If just shake your head and know so you can. Do that for me. I don't know why I'm doing this. But can God... Can God, can God, is God capable? Yes, is God capable of taking somebody whose heart was, the doctor's report says, 11 minutes without a heartbeat. Is God able to keep their brain secure? Yes, is God able to have, oh yes, God is able. Not only is he capable, but not only is he Christ, and not only is he capable, but he's credible. <laughs> if, you ever fill out a, if you ever fill out an application, it's always wise to attach your resume. Sometimes an application doesn't give you enough opportunity to sell yourself. <laughs> so if you fill out an application... Regardless if they ask for it or not, you attach a resume. Because your, your goal when you're applying for a job is to sell yourself. Let them know if they pass you up, they messing up. Amen. Praise the Lord. But watch here, just very quickly. Credible. So a resume makes me become more credible for that job. On that, on that resume, I not only have a list, perhaps, of, of, of opportunities that I perform well in, but there's probably some opportunity on that resume. I'm going to put some references. And those references is, is a backup to what I said. I challenge you to call reference number one. Call reference number two. I want you to call them. Why? Because they're going to make me credible. Folks, I just want you to picture in your mind the resume of Christ. <laughs> the resume of Christ, Pastor Michael. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Have you ever seen a resume? Now, they say that a resume needs to be on one page. Don't ever extend your resume too long. You don't want a two or three or four page resume. You want basically a one straightforward resume on a one page sheet if possible. Hallelujah. But I just hate to tell the employers that Jesus was after. Hallelujah. He can't put all his stuff on one page. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's credible. He, he's credible. Hallelujah. Now, I just got finished taking you through every book of the Bible to talk to you a little bit about his credibility. But I can spend a lot more time uh, in getting a little bit more specific. I'm telling you, if you don't think he's credible, just ask the woman uh, with, the, with the issue of blood. 
Just ask the man that sat by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Just ask the, 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 the lame man at the gate of beautiful in Acts chapter 3, I believe it is. Just ask, hallelujah, that one today that was in the, that was in the house and the friends, uh, that, that was in the house, but Lord, the friend down inside the house. If you don't think that he's credible, I can take you on and on and on and on. Just ask Saul who became saved uh, on the road to Damascus and God turned his life around uh, and he now is no longer named Saul. He's now Paul. He's now no longer a persecutor but now he's a church planter. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today uh, that Christ uh, is capable and he is credible. Folks, but that's good. That's good. I take you through the whole Bible. I just give you a few specific names right there. But in case you're saying, or the enemy's taking it in your mind right now, well, that's the Bible. That happened way back yonder. Can I tell you today that you're looking at a credible reason? You're looking at a credible reason to turn to Christ. Hallelujah. Just in case you don't know, I haven't always been saved. Oh, I know y'all have, though. I know y'all have always been saved. But your pastor has not always been saved. I haven't always done what I should have done. I haven't always lived the life of a Christian. Amen. I got some stuff in my past that I'm not proud of. Hallelujah. But don't get too spiritual on me or too re religious on me. You've got some closet filled too. Amen. Hallelujah. But I remember a day, uh, when it actually it was a Sunday night in my single wide mobile home uh, in Florence, South Carolina. There wasn't nobody around. It was just me and Christ. Uh, hallelujah. But I was under conviction, Brother Billy, and I knelt beside my bed right there in Florence and I said, Lord, uh, would you save me tonight? Uh, would you come into my life and save me. And I'm telling you right now, I may not be a perfect man, but I am a changed man by the power of God. You heard the story. Many of you have. Maybe some haven't. So let me tell you. When I was first born, infant born, born out of the mother's womb, I had something. Some type of blood deficiency. Now, of course, I don't remember this, so don't go there. I was just born. I had a blood deficiency, some type of blood, rare blood deficiency. I am rare. <laughs> Hallelujah. But because of this blood deficiency, my mom and dad said that the doctors told them that I had 1% chance, 1% chance of probably ever walking and talking and being normal. At that time, my pastor came by the hospital. And they made him dress up in the suits and stuff, you know, because I was just freshly born, not long. Hallelujah. And the pastor went in. They let him go into the nursery where I was. And mom and dad said he didn't pray no spiritual prayer. He didn't huck and buck in the nursery. He didn't jump up and down. He just prayed to the master. <laughs> he just prayed to the master. And after he got finished praying, he went on back out. They were supposed to give me a blood transfusion. That was the only 1% chance I had was through a complete blood transfusion. Hallelujah. So about 30 minutes before the blood transfusion, they said, let's check him one more time to make sure everything is it is before we give him the transfusion. They checked my blood the next time. I, it, it had turned 180 degrees. I never got a blood transfusion. I still got my biological blood. I still have what God put in me from day one. I may not be the brightest man. I may not be the handsomest man, but I'm a normal man. Hallelujah. You done come way too late to make me believe that Christ can't do what you need. 
that just in case I'm not enough, just in case the 66 books of the Bible ain't enough, just in case those folks doing his ministry is not enough, let me go a little step further. Is there anybody in here that will stand and testify that Jesus Christ is credible and that he'll do some big things in your life? Hallelujah. Come on. I don't watch this. I'm talking about, do you know? Sister Vidal, do you know? Yes. Brother Abe, do you know? Yes. Sabrina, do you know? Pastor Heidi, do you know? Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Be seated and I'm finishing. So the why to the question. And now the who to the question. He's Christ. That's really enough. But I thought I'd just help you and talk to you about how capable he is and talk to you about how credible he is. Now let me finish up with a couple more. How charitable he is. Charitable. You know what the word charitable means, right? It means generous. It means kind. But I like the next synonym, open-handed. Open-handed. Folks, you got to believe this, that the master, Christ, is not withholding the kingdom from us. He's not, he's, it's not his desire to keep us not living the kingdom life. It is his desire. I have come that you may have what? Life and it more abundantly. Not to, to quit allowing the devil to steal, to kill, and destroy. It's my plan for you as a believer to live above the works of the enemy. He's charitable. He's open-handed. He's generous. Listen to what he said himself in Luke chapter 12. Listen to what he says. He says, fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure. To give you what? Fear not, little flock. Fear not, Christians. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We believe that when it comes to him giving us freedom from sin through salvation. That's why we got saved. We accept that. But we're, we're trying to stand, we're trying to stand in society as a believer on one leg. And folks, if you've ever tried to sit on a one-legged stool, you're going to find yourself falling off. It's going to be wobbly. It's going to be very unstable. Now, I'm not trying to make him as an unstable God, and I'm not trying to make salvation being unstable. But what, but what I'm saying is that you've only got one leg to kingdom living. You, you see him as Christ when it comes to salvation. You see him as capable of saving you. You see him as credible when it comes to saving you. And you see him as charitable when it comes to saving you. But we've allowed our small thinking or our earthly thinking to hold us back from the other two legs. What is the other two legs? Freedom from stress. Freedom from sadness. Folks, just as salvation is a free gift, he stands there, he sits there, and he says, here it is. I'm not going to give it to you, but you can come get it. I'm not just going to come throw it at you and you got it. But if you want it, come get saved. It doesn't change. 
If you want freedom over that stress, come get it. If you want freedom over that sadness and despondency and despair, come get it. The same Christ that saved you is the same Christ that will walk with you. He is free-handed. He's open-handed. He, we're not serving one, Brother Billy, that is trying to keep good things from us. He said if your earthly father knows how to, good, to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly father want to give unto you the power of the Holy Ghost? Let me go and I'm finished. So why would I say turn to him? Well, because of the why. He's, he's going to build your life and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. He's going to help give you the keys to the kingdom. But what would convince me to do that? Well, if that's not enough, turn to him because he's Christ. He's credible. He's capable. He's charitable. And number four, five, he's compassionate. He's compassionate. All throughout the ministry of Jesus, I challenge you to go do it yourself. All throughout the, min the ministry of Jesus, the Bible says he moved with compassion. He moved with compassion. He moved with compassion. He saw this need. He moved with compassion. He moved with compassion. It was love that brought him down. And it was love that he operated out of. Folks, there's nothing, I'm just being honest, there's nothing that I would not give that lady that I had access to. Now, I can't give her something I ain't got access to. But if I had access to it, and I know she not just needed it, but wanted it, I'm like putty in her hand. Come on. See, some of you men don't want to say that. But I'm like putty in her hand. She can mold that putty however she wants. Amen. Why? Because I'm compassionately in love with her. I'm limited to what I can give her. But Christ is unlimited. And he moves with compassion. Folks, listen to me. I cannot emphasize to you enough how much he loves you. He compassionately is deeply in love with you. What greater love why greater love than a man that would lay down his life for his friends? I'm finished. I believe I have theologically shown you what the kingdom of God is. I believe I have thoroughly theologically showed you the importance of the revelation. The revelation is personally, not what somebody else says, but personally, you understanding that he is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So if you're here today and you don't know him personally, do not hold on to that chair. You come this morning. If you hear and you have received him as Savior, but you confessed, you confessed that I've been sitting on one leg. I want the other two legs of the kingdom. So would you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. According to that clock right there, it's 1029. <laughs> I've never preached that early. I've got to finish preached a many, a many, a many, a many, a many, a many, a many messages. If you go in my office and you look up under my desk, 
I keep all of my sermons on file, of course, zip drives and stuff like that. But I also keep a hard copy of my sermons. If you go in there, there's the box is literally, the top won't even fit on it. I've preached on many a sermon, folks. But I'll be honest with you, I probably have never preached a more powerful message that I have today. Because I've, what I've preached today will take a man out of sin. And not only will it take a man out of sin, it'll help them to live above stress and above sadness. The kingdom life. The kingdom life. The kingdom is not something we're trying to get to. The kingdom of God. Well, how did, I ain't got time to preach this, but how did Jesus teach us to pray? How did Jesus teach the disciples to pray? Thy what? Pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, is there freedom above sin and stress and sadness in heaven? Yes. But what he says, I don't want you just to wait to get to heaven. I want you to pray for the kingdom to come to you on this earth. I'm preaching this morning to some people. There's some people here this morning you need to get saved. There's some people here this morning that you need the other two stools, the other two legs. Or maybe you need one of the other legs. Right now, on the count to three. I'm not going to wait on you to sing the first verse. I'm not going to ask you to bow your heads. If you're ready to come get the kingdom, if you're ready to come get the kingdom, turn and trust Christ. Turn and trust Christ. Come deep in that revelation of who he is in your life. Come right now. Come right now. There's no more tarrying. Come right now. If you want any aspect of the kingdom, if you want, if you want the kingdom of God, if you want to be saved, if you want God to help you through some stressful times, if you want God to help you through some sad times, I want you to come right now. Come right now. Hallelujah. Come right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come right now. I can't, I can't, I can't ask, no, I can't make nobody come. All I can do is ask you to come. Hallelujah. I want the kingdom. I want the kingdom in my life. I want to live the kingdom life. Hallelujah. I want to live that kingdom living. Come on, sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there any others? Come on. Hallelujah. I'm surprised the altars aren't filled. I'll be very honest. Hallelujah. But that's okay. Hallelujah. Right there where you are, if you don't feel like coming. Hallelujah. The Lord, the Lord is right there. Hallelujah. 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 You can't find the kingdom. You can't just happen a stance and fall into it. You gotta turn to the master. Some of you are stressed out. Some of you are very sad, and I'm not saying there's not rightful reasons to be stressed and rightful reasons to be sad. I'm not telling you that I don't ever battle with those things, but I'm here to tell you I'm learning as I build my kingdom life. As God's building that kingdom life on the inside of me, I don't stay as stressed as long as I used to. I don't stay as sad as, as long as I used to. Why? Because he's keeping me reminded, Derek, I've given you the keys to the kingdom, Derek, because you have a revelation of who I am. I'm, I'm going to build your church. I'm going to build your life. I'm going to build you above the gates of hell. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning and you need him just to do a work in your life, come on, come on. Nobody's going to ask you what you're coming for, but you just need him to help you, baby, to live out of sin, to live above sin, or to live above stress and sadness. Would you come? Hallelujah. Sing it. That's right. Come on, young man. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother Stacy. Would you come pray with him? Hallelujah. Oh, how I need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, don't sit there if you feel that urge. 
Don't stay there if you feel that urge. Hallelujah. Come. Come today. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, how I need you, Lord. it this morning as I continue to pray around the altars today to two questions that who do men say that I am is your answer today as the men answered you're answering that question based off of what somebody else has said or what maybe your grandparents or parents said to you about him but that's not really the question the question at hand is this it's not what anybody has said but what do you say? Do you know him? Do you understand who he is? And if you don't today, I'm telling you today, he's available. He's available. He's available. In the name of Jesus, he's available. Maybe, and I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it's just coming, coming to my mind. Maybe you once had that relationship with him. Maybe you once was in that relationship with him, but you allowed yourself to make decisions and you drifted away. Think about that prodigal son. When he came, when he was ready to come back home, the father didn't reject him. The father didn't turn him aside. As a matter of fact, the, top, the, the father ran out there and greeted him and kissed him and gave him a new covering. I'm here to tell you this morning, you haven't gone too far that Jesus won't take you back. He loves you today. You're stressed out. Jesus loves you today. He wants to give you the keys. He wants to give you the kingdom. You're sad. You're brokenhearted over something. He wants you to live above that. The kingdom today. Would you just reach out to him this morning with your hands in the air, everybody, if you, if you don't mind. I just want to pray for everybody here, right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these who have came to the altar, who have come to the altar this morning, saying that I want the kingdom life. I want the kingdom life. I turn and I trust Christ. Now I pray for all the others today that are here that may have felt like they wanted to make that move, but they didn't make that move. I pray today, God, that you would just minister to them even after we say amen. Let them know today that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus Christ is available. Is available. He's available. Speak, we pray, even after we walk out of these doors. Speak, we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Give the Lord a big clap off of the praise today. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to embarrass him. I'm trying to make him stronger. Today he has publicly confessed that I gave my life to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 God bless you, man. God bless you, brother Daniel. God bless you. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I feel like shouting. Hallelujah! Brother Daniel, that's one leg, buddy, but that's two more legs. Hallelujah! 
to help you overcome a life of stress and sadness. Praise the Lord. Wow. Well, are you glad you came to church? Praise God. Put your hands one more time. The Lord says, I'll bless you. The Lord says, I'll keep you. The Lord says, I'll shine down upon you and I'll give you grace. My countenance shall become your countenance and my peace shall become your peace. Thank you for the word of God today. Not my preaching, but thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for the revelation and the promises that come with that revelation. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Be with us now as we exit. Go with us today. If there's one here today that's leaving that's still feeling compelled and convicted, I pray, God, that you will continue to work with them. Believe in today, God, that Brother Daniel's not the only person, but others today are, are in their hearts crying out to God. We give you thanks and praise, oh God. Help us to live the kingdom life by understanding the revelation of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you today. We love you. Hallelujah. If you bypass Brother Daniel, give him a high five. Tell him congratulations this morning. Don't forget about Wednesday night. Don't forget about your missions offered on the way out. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Be blessed in Jesus' name.